Chapter 2 The Curse Link stared into the yellow eyes of the man atop the black steed. A fairy was screaming for him to run. He wanted to flee, but his limbs would not obey. So he stood there, rooted to the spot as those amber eyes burned into his soul. The black horse shifted its hooves, turning its head as the man peered more closely at the terrified boy. Link's fear seemed to amuse him, for he smirked and raised his hand. Dread welled up in Link, for he knew what was coming. The dream always ended the same way. Not again, he thought. Please, not again. Hey, wake up! Came the fairy's shrill shout. Link barely heard it. The fairy screamed, diving to block the ball of lightning that flew in Link's direction. He looked away and felt a soft thump as the fairy fell against his boot. Against his will, his eyes were drawn to the grisly sight that awaited him. The fairy's burnt and broken body lay in a pool of muddy water. Its dazzling ethereal glow once so bright and full of life, was fading. Link, wake up! The disembodied voice came from everywhere. The gem on the writer's glove glowed, and a flash of lightning crackled towards Link. The terrified boy opened his mouth in a scream that never came, and the man's cruel laughter chased him into darkness. Wake up! The insistent squeak of a fairy came again. Hey, wake up, sleepyhead! The great Deku Tree wants to talk to you. His mind desperately clawed its way from the stark terrors of the dream and, and back to reality. Link moaned softly, the incessant screeching pounding through his skull. He rolled over only to feel something smack the side of his ear. And with a flick of his hand, he slapped it. There was a squeal and a loud indignant, Ouch! How rude! Half asleep, Link groaned as the persistent sprite tried to wake him up again. I am not moving until you wake up! This is urgent! She exclaimed. Can Hyrule's destiny really depend on such a lazy boy? As drowsy as he was, those words managed to catch Link's attention. Uh, Hyrule's... destiny? What? He opened his eyes, squinting at the sudden intrusion of light. Blinking sleepily, he took in the sight of the room. He was half expecting to find Mita or Forens with their fairy beside him. There were no other Kokiri. As Link quickly overcame his disorientation, his eyes fell upon a fairy flying up and down in front of him. He blinked. It was the same one from his dream. He was certain of it. Recalling her broken and twisted body lying against his muddy boot, he shivered, feeling suddenly cold. Uh, are you awake now? The fairy asked when Link continued to stare. You can stop staring at me like that. Has you, anyone taught you that it's rude to- Who are you? Link asked, the fairy looking none too pleased by his interruption. My name is Navi, she replied crisply. Honestly, I would have thought you'd never seen a fairy before. Are you alright? You seem very dazed. I'm fine, Link said, rubbing the sleep from his eyes before asking, What are you doing here? Navi sighed, shaking her head as she pinched the bridge of her nose. I was hoping somebody would fill you in so this would be faster! Link caught the fairy's impatient tone and felt a rush of annoyance. What was this fairy's problem? He wasn't sure he liked her very much. Navi must have realized her error. She quickly relaxed her posture and let her hands fall to her side. The great Deku Tree has appointed me to be your guardian fairy. Within seconds, Link's irritation melted away. My own fairy? You... what? He stammered. Link nearly pinched himself, thinking that this was either a dream or an elaborate prank. He half expected Mito to jump out from behind the door and say, Heh <laughs> tricked you, fairy -less. When no Mito appeared, and Nami did not disappear like a figment of an overactive imagination, Link's heart swelled with delight. Didn't you hear me? Navi asked, raising her voice. I'm going to be your partner. Can't you hear very well? Really? Link blurted. He almost laughed, completely oblivious to Navi's irate tone. My partner? I actually get to have my own fairy? That's what I said! 
Link didn't care that Navi was staring at him as though he were slightly simple. He let out a jubilant woo, barely managing to resist the urge to scoop her in his hands. Finally, my wish has come true, he yelled happily to the ceiling. Yes, I have a fairy! I have a fairy! Wait till Mito sees this. Oh, wait, I have to tell Saria. He jumped up, breathless with excitement. He had to tell Forens. He had to tell everyone. Oh, they weren't going to believe this. That was when he noticed Navi was still scowling. Oh boy, he was beginning to think she wasn't much fun at all. Sensing that she was waiting for him to sit back down and behave himself, Link perched on the edge of his bed. Look, I know this must be exciting and all, but we have to go to the Great Deku Tree. But now! Link's immediate thought was that he'd done something wrong. Was this about the Deku scrub he'd lured into Mito's house the other day? Or was it about those rabbit droppings Link had snuck into Mito's soup? <laughs> that hadn't even been his idea. Link tried to think of what else could warrant a summons to the Great Deku Tree. He'd come across four of Mito's cronies throwing stones and jeering at a Skull Kid, one of the more elusive inhabitants of the Lost Woods. Deciding he'd had enough of their taunts, he'd thrown mud at them. They gave chase, allowing the Skull Kid to flee the scene without so much as a thank you. Link, not without a plan, had led his pursuers straight into a nest of Deku Scrubs. Deku Scrubs didn't take well to being disturbed, and so they'd sprung on the kids that were chasing Link. They were harmless creatures, usually. When disturbed, they could spit a foul slime from their snout, temporarily blinding their unfortunate victim. Link had avoided the nest, but his pursuers hadn't been so lucky. Mito probably knew about that. No doubt his friends had neglected to mention that they'd been attacking a Skull Kid and calling him a freak. In their version of the tale, Link had probably attacked them. Link felt his heart sink. Yes, that was probably it. Have I done something wrong? He asked at last. Navi looked startled. What? Uh, no, he has an errand for you. Odd. The Great Deku Tree never asked the Kokiri to run errands, at least not directly. That was a task usually bestowed on the forest fairies. The shaman, a Kokiri gifted in communicating with the spirits of the woods, would see that his wishes were carried out. He wondered why the Great Deku Tree hadn't simply summoned Saria or Mito. It wasn't like Link could easily get to the Great Deku Tree's glade. A thick mass of strange plants now surrounded the meadow and resisted every effort to remove them. The plants either just grew back or they attacked with their long thorny branches. Being cut off from the Great Deku Tree had distressed a great number of the Kokiri. He was, after all, a central part of their daily lives. He was the one who told them what they could and couldn't hunt, where and when they could forage, and what trees they could cut down for wood, amongst a host of other things. A month after the appearance of the tangled mesh of strange plants, the Kokiri had only managed to make a single wide path into the Forest Guardian's meadow. Mito had been assigned to guard the path so that nobody would come afoul of the deadly foliage. Come to think of it, if the only risk was getting attacked by a deadly plant, <laughs> maybe Mito would let him pass. Dozens of thoughts crashed into Link's mind as he tried to process what was happening. He clutched at them, trying to make sense of everything, and then something occurred to him. Hang on, Link exclaimed, his earlier elation vanishing quicker than a snuffed candle flame. Usually, we get our fairy in a ceremony. I get one too, don't I? There's no time. Navi said with an unmistakable look of impatience. Link knew he was wearing the fairy's patience thin, but something in her tone caught his attention. Something wasn't right. Why? he asked curiously. What's going on? Navi drew his attention to the sack on the table. Until now, he'd been too focused on Navi to pay it any mind. What is that? he asked. A gift, said Navi, her voice lightening as she spoke. Link was surprised by the bag's weight. With no regard to the fragility of its contents, he tipped the bag upside down and something slid out with a dull thunk. His heart skipped a beat as he beheld a gleaming silver blade. He withdrew the sword from its sheath, marveling as the blade hummed free from the scabbard. He'd seen a weapon like this before, only it had been dull and rusted by the elements. Saria had made him get rid of it. Keeping such objects found near the edge of the woods was bad luck, especially since he'd found it in the remains of an abandoned campsite presumably made by an ill-fated traveler. Wow, he breathed in awe. A real sword! He ran a finger along the cold steel, accidentally nicking his finger in the process. Ow! It's sharp. Of course it's sharp! Navi rebuked him as if this were the most obvious thing in the world. 
Link gripped the hilt, getting a feel for the blade. He cleaved it through the air with an enthusiastic swipe. Hey, now isn't the time for that, Navi chided him. Link assumed a mock battle stance and then swung again, accidentally upsetting a clay pot that was sitting too close to the edge of a shelf. Ksh! Navi did not look amused. She stared at the broken pottery and then at him. The great Deku tree, she reminded him curtly. You didn't tell me what was going on, Link said, giving her a meaningful look as he sheathed his sword. There had to be a reason he'd been given a sword of all things. You'll find out soon enough. Come on. Oh, bring your slingshot and hunting bow as well. At Link's questioning look, Navi added with poorly hidden exasperation, Just get ready. I'll be waiting for you outside. Link stared after Navi as she disappeared through the open curtain to the balcony. He shook his head. Everything was happening too fast. He had been summoned to the great Deku Tree, given a fairy who had no patience, and told to arm himself with every weapon he owned. A tinge of fear nodded him. What could be the reason behind everything that had just happened? Had something happened to the great Deku Tree? Was there something in the woods? That idea did not ease Link's worries, and he quickly started getting ready. First, he swept the broken pot underneath the bed, certain that Saria wouldn't notice it. He had only just pulled on a fresh tunic when Navi peered around the door. Ready yet? She asked. Almost. Navi seemed pleased with this and resumed her vigil beside the door. Link donned the rest of his gear, stuffing his slingshot in Saria's bag. Wolfing down some food, which consisted of some rather sour fruit, he stepped towards the door. Finally, he heard Navi sigh with relief. Now are you ready? Link ignored her, brought a hand to his head and froze. Something was missing. My hat! He ran back inside to get it, earning an audible groan from Navi. Scrabbling in the small wooden chest at the foot of his bed, Link found his hat and jammed it on. Navi was peering through the door again. She spotted two bottles of Fairy's Tears, which she promptly told Link to grab. He refrained from asking why, since his questions only seemed to annoy her. As always, the village was busy in the early morning. Kokiri greeted each other from the walkways in the trees above, while others sat against tall trunks finishing their breakfast, a simple meal of fruit, nut, and goat's milk. Link hadn't meant to sleep in this long. Oops, he thought. I hope Sari is not mad at me. Ah, uh, she wouldn't be. Not when she saw his fairy. Some of the younger Kokiri, who, who were still a few years older than Link, were playing with a ball of stitched together animal hide. Most of the forest children had decorated their faces with pigments of brown, rust red, and dark green to help them blend in with their forest surroundings. Several hounds lay by a nearby tree snoozing lazily in the morning sun. It wouldn't be long before they would head off into the woods with their owners. The village was more crowded than usual, with many Kokiri from elsewhere in the woods now moving into the grove. Further along the path from Link's abode, Saria herself was walking towards him. She'd already spotted Navi, for Link saw her eyes widen with curiosity. Having hoped to surprise her, that disappointed him a little. Navi probably wouldn't have agreed to the idea of hiding anyway. Clambering down the ladder, Link joined Saria at the edge of the weed-choked path. He felt a little guilty about that. He'd promised to keep his small dwelling tidy. Hey, Saria, guess what? Link beamed, hands clasped behind his back as if he were hiding something. What? Saria asked, offering him a curious smile. Navi's frustrated groan caught Saria's attention, ruining any semblance of surprise. I have my own fairy, Link announced. <gasps> A fairy? Saria gasped. You have a fairy? Oh, Link, this is wonderful news. Link's heart swelled with delight at Saria's beaming smile, but then she frowned as she spotted the sword clasped to Link's back. She must have mistaken it for Forens' workmanship, for her face was suddenly incredulous. Where'd you get that? Then, with a suddenly suspicious tone, she asked, Did you find it in the woods? What? No, uh, Navi gave it to me. Really? You gave Link a sword? Saria sounded baffled as she glanced between him and Navi. It looks lovely, but it was the great Deku's tree's wish that I give Link a sword. Navi explained quickly. He didn't say why. The great Deku tree? He didn't tell me that, Saria said, looking very confused. Navi and I are off to see him now, Link said, too excited to notice Saria's confusion. He did notice Navi fold her arms against her chest and tilt her head towards the great Deku tree. He wondered if she was always this impatient. Saria noticed this too. You seem rather flustered, Navi. 
Is something wrong? I'm not sure, Navi said. Link picked up the undertones of anxiety in her voice. What is it? Saria said anxiously. It's to do with what is happening in the woods. That's all I can tell you, said Navi. A brief silence followed those words. Even amidst his excitement, Link could feel the tension in her voice. It dampened his spirits slightly. We'd better hurry. Fora and I have been summoned too, Saria said at last. Come on, Mina won't be pleased to let anyone through. Uh, which reminds me, did you really put rabbit droppings in his stew? Uh, no, Link said too quickly. It, it wasn't me. Saria cocked an eyebrow at him and then pursed her lips. That wasn't very nice of you, Link. If I catch you doing that again... It was only a joke, Link protested. Foran said I can't hurt him. He didn't say I can't play tricks on him. You know very well that could have made him sick. How would you like it if someone did that to you? Link managed a sheepish smile. I won't do it again, I promise. He didn't think Saria believed him, but they both knew they couldn't dawdle any longer. We can talk about your pranks later, Saria said with a small sigh. Come on, we don't want to be late. Rabbit droppings, Navi asked, sounding appalled. That's disgusting. Eager to show off Navi, despite his misgivings about her, Link ignored the fairy and bounded towards the trail that led to the great Deku tree. Slow down, Saria called. As he approached Mito, Link was amused to see that Mori was nowhere in sight. Link grinned from ear to ear, earning a suspicious stare from the older Kokiri. Well, you're in a good mood this morning, aren't you? He snarled with a sneer. I'm off to see the great Deku tree, Link told him cheerfully. Mito folded his arms, one foot tapping the ground. Are you deaf as well, stupid, Mr. No Fairy? He asked. You can't see the great Deku tree. Now stop pestering me and... Uh, oh, Saria, what are you doing here? Mito's grumbling came to a screeching halt as Saria joined them. Hello, Mito. She greeted warmly. Mito's eyes darted between the other two Kokiri. Can you tell me what's going on here? Link's claiming the great Deku tree summoned him. He has, and I'm going with him, Saria replied crisply. What? Mito exclaimed. Why would the great Deku tree want anything to do with him? Link did not fail to notice the emphasis on that last word. Such was the downside of having slightly paler skin than all the other Kokiri. Before Link could come up with a retort, Navi came out of his pocket to see what the holdup was. Mito, who was rarely at a loss for words, was shocked into silence. He looked at Link and Navi in disbelief. What's this? He asked incredulously. Good grief, is this a joke? Wait. Mito grinned triumphantly and closed his eyes, appearing convinced he'd just had an epiphany. Ah, I see now. You convinced a fairy in the woods to follow you, didn't you? He opened his eyes again and smirked. <laughs> nice try, but you won't fool me. She's Link's fairy, Mito. Her name's Navi, Saria said sternly. Her tone warned Mito to show some respect. Predictably, he, he didn't notice. I don't believe it, Mito spat. He spotted Link's sword next, his eyebrows nearly vanishing beneath the fringe of his hair. Is that uh, a sword? He spluttered. An actual... Uh, wait... Have you taken to robbing travelers that stray into the woods? Are you trying to give us all bad luck? No, just you, Link thought before replying tersely. Navi gave it to me. A fairy giving a cocurious sword? <laughs> Mito scoffed. That's ridiculous. What are you planning to do with it? Cut grass? Actually, I was wondering if I could stab you with it, Link said sarcastically. Saria's look of disapproval made him regret his choice of words. Perhaps he should have put more animal droppings in Mito's soup. That would have kept him occupied and out of the way. Huh, <laughs> Mito snorted. You wouldn't dare. Can I go through now? Link asked. No. Why not? Link demanded, his anger rising. You'll need a shield before I let you through. Where's yours? Link shot back. Mito picked up a club and shield behind him. The shield was the same design as the one Link used in training. As for the club, Link was not convinced Mito could use it without smacking himself. Before he could say anything, Navi's patience snapped. Hey! You listen to me! Sparks seemed to fly as Navi flew so close to Mito's face that he had to look cross-eyed to see her. 
obstructing an order by the great Deku tree is out of line, Mito. This is official forest business. I will make sure he hears about this. There was a moment of stunned silence, and then Mito laughed. Now this is the funniest thing I've heard all morning. <laughs> Abruptly, he slapped Navi, belting her aside as if she were a fly. She tumbled in the air and then caught herself before she could fall. Saria's eyes bulged and Link gasped in shock. Deliberately harming a fairy was taboo amongst the Kokiri. Even Mito was staring at Navi with a sheepish look of dismay as Fora quickly asked if she was okay. You! Link growled, stepping forward. Saria grabbed him before he could move another foot. Let me handle this. She let go of him and poked a finger at Mito's chest. Apologize now! I didn't... Now! Even Link took a step back when he heard Saria's fierce tone. Um, sorry, Mito squeaked, sounding like a mouse being trotted on. Navi regarded him with an icy glare. Are you okay, Navi? Saria asked, the sudden ferocity gone from her voice. I'm fine, Navi replied stiffly. The look she offered Link suggested that she finally understood his desire to give Mito food poisoning. Now... Sarya said, anger seething in her voice as she thrust a finger at Mito. Do you want me to tell the Great Deku Tree that you were the reason Link took all morning to get to him? If you don't let us through, that's exactly what I'll tell him. Her voice carried through the clearing behind them, causing several heads to look curiously in their direction. Okay, fine, I'll let you through, but... Mito cringed as Sarya's expression grew promptly more furious. He will need a shield. And so will you. Fine, Saria snapped. You didn't make me take one last time. It was it was less dangerous yesterday, Mito explained. Both Link and Saria looked at him skeptically. There are Deku Babas on the path now. I'm serious. <sighs> sure, Mito, Link replied. It wasn't the first time Mito had claimed that there were Deku Babas around. It wasn't unusual for him to try and frighten Link into believing he was going to get eaten by one. It never worked. What are you talking about? Saria pushed past Mito, who didn't resist. S Saria! There was concern in Mito's voice as he shouted, Saria! Be careful! Link raced to join Saria. They walked for a few minutes, passing the withered Deku tree strangled by creepers. The thorny bushes on either side of the path brandished their branches menacingly, daring him to get closer. They soon came across the source of Mito's concern around a bend in the path. Three rather peculiar plants with slithering tentacles around their stems, had taken up residence in the middle of the track. The strangest feature of these plants was their clam-like mouth, consisting of two shells joined by a muscular hinge at the stem's tip. One of them was devouring the remains of a monkey, stripping off chunks of meat with razor-sharp teeth. Mito sure wasn't lying about their ferocious appearance. When Saria saw the monkey, she let out a small squeak of fright and turned a tinge of green that almost matched her hair. Oh my! The poor thing! Taking his eyes off the monkey, Link stared at the hissing plants in revulsion. Deku Babas were uncommon. They never grew this close to the Kokiri groves, preferring the densest regions of the Lost Woods. To find one here was very unexpected. Seeking Navi's advice, Link was surprised to see that she didn't look remotely surprised at the sight of the plants. It's only young, so its venom's not deadly yet, she said. Only a baby plant? Link eyed the nearest to Baba, its teeth sharp enough to tear him to ribbons. <laughs> yeah, that's really comforting, Navi. If Navi noticed his sarcasm, she ignored it. As he considered what to do, Link turned to Saria, noticing that she looked like she was going to be sick. Oh, Saria, are you... Link began. I'm fine, she said, her voice muffled by the sleeve she held across her mouth. Once she took a few deep breaths, she regained her composure and offered him a reassuring smile. Really? Can you summon the forest spirits to remove these things? Somehow? Link asked. Saria's gift allowed her to communicate with animals, and even some trees. She could summon animals to her aid or calm them, but this power was not without its cost. Link knew it was immensely tiring, and more than once, Saria had been left bedridden until the next day. They're too scared to come near here, Saria replied. Something in the woods is terrifying them. If I'm right, it's beneath the great Deku Tree's grove. Her words sent a chill down Link's spine. What could scare a spirit? 
or stop the great Deku Tree from dealing with these creatures himself. Navi didn't give him time to dwell on the question or the implications of it. Maybe we should take Mito's advice, she suggested. How's a shield going to help? Link asked. He didn't see how a slab of wood was going to be much use. It will give him something to munch on, Sarya said. That will make it easier to deal with him. Something other than us, you mean? Link looked at the partially devoured monkey. Suddenly, a shield seemed like a very sensible idea. Great, he thought. Now Mito was going to jeer at him for not listening. Gritting his teeth, Link headed back towards the village. Sure enough, Mito was right where they'd left him. Oddly, he was staring anxiously at Sarya. Then he spotted Link and called out, See? Told you, didn't I? Link ignored him and went to collect two shields from Forens's house, which was nestled in the forest canopy, along with the other dwellings of the Kokiri elders. Link, with Sarya close behind him, had to trek up ramps, across bridges of woven vine, and along walkways of Deku wood. Many of the Kokiri were leaving on errands in the forest, but heads swiveled in Link's direction when they saw he had a fairy, and someone loudly congratulated him. Sarya fended off a babble of excited questions as Link was congratulated with pats on the backs and high fives. There were a few baleful glares and muttered insults from some of the more spiteful Kokiri, but they were greatly outnumbered. If the fairy by Link's side caused a stir, it was nothing compared to the uproar provoked by the sword strapped behind him. Wicked! A real sword! Whoa! Where'd you get that? Hey! Can I have a turn with it? Please? I want a turn. You can't use that! Let Link show us! I asked first! Did not! Oh, come on! Show us how to use it, Link! Um, how about no? Now they interrupted as Link and Sarya squeezed past the crowd. <laughs> Boys. Sarya muttered before sending the ugly Kokiri scampering off to their duties. Not all of them left quietly. Aw, you're no fun at all, one boy whined. He scooted off at a nudge and Sarya's scolding frown. I doubt Forens would approve of you showing off, Sarya added as Link stared after the offending kid. Link was enjoying the attention, but it wasn't to last. Navi hid in his hat, remarking loudly, Would you two please hurry up? Not all the attention was friendly. Some cast suspicious glances at Link's sword, whispering quietly to each other, probably thinking that Link had found it in the woods. More than one wandering traveler had ventured into its depths, but they never seemed to make it close to the Kokiri's homes. The only sign Link found of their passage were the scattered remains of an abandoned camp where he'd first caught sight of a steel blade. Everyone knew not to touch anything that had been left behind. Rumor was that a small band of Kokiri had stumbled on a camp once, and upon finding a seemingly harmless object, They'd been turned into Skull Kids, the same folk who had been exiled from their groves. Link wasn't sure he believed that story, but the whispers that followed him let him know that not everyone shared this opinion. Finally, he reached Forens' house. Nobody was home, so Link retrieved two of Forens' finished shields and left another Kokiri to tell him where they had gone. When they returned to Mito, Link saw Mori had returned and was sitting lazily on a nearby rock. This really isn't a joke? Mito asked as the other two Kokiri stepped up to him. Fine, Link, go ahead. He paused, checking to make sure Saria was busy talking to Fora, and then added in a whisper, But even with a sword, a wimp is still a wimp. Link stepped forward, but not before Saria placed herself between them. Mito hadn't been quiet enough. She shoved Mito into the sign behind him and came within an inch of his face. Don't you ever call him that again, she snapped. Now let us through, or else I'll slap you! For a moment, Link was sure Sarya might do just that. To his disappointment, she didn't, and Mito stepped aside. Okay, I'm sorry, just go through, Mito replied meekly. Just go. As they started down the path, there was a tirade of relieved mutterings from Navi. Sarya and Link rounded the corner to find the Dekubabas again. Link approached, treading lightly on the soft ground. The closest plant flickered its long, serpentine tongue, hissing menacingly at him. Link hesitated before taking a few steps forward cautiously. The plant did not move. Another step, and then another. Link kept his eyes on the revolting menace. In the blink of an eye, it sprang forward! Link leaped back, the plant's jaw snapping shut on air. The Dekubaba let out another angry hiss, and Link swung its sword straight into the stem. 
The severed end crashed to the ground while its tentacles went limp. <sighs> With a sigh of relief, Link stared at the plant's remains. Well, that wasn't too hard. Then, he felt one of the slithering appendages wrap itself around his boot. Before Link knew what was happening, the slimy tentacle yanked him off his feet. Link! Sarya and Navi screamed. Link cried out in shock, the plant dragging him towards its gaping maw. He clawed at the dirt with one hand, holding his shield firmly in the other. Sarya darted to Link's sword and grabbed it. Only feet away from the plant's mouth, all Link could think about was the half-devoured monkey. With a shout, he shoved the shield into the creature's mouth. The Dekubaba's jaw clamped shut on the sturdy wood. It took the shield once, and then threw it in Sarya's direction. Sarya ducked, and then slashed her sword straight through the plant's stem. <sighs> Thanks, Link breathed. Sarya gave him back his sword, and they approached the third Dekubaba. At first, it ignored them. But with an abruptness that startled Link, two of the plant's tentacles sprang out of the ground. Link hacked the first tentacle. The second whipped him across the face. He cried out in shock, slamming into the other earth as a third appendage reached for his waist. A fourth tentacle reached for Sarya, who slammed her wooden sword into it. Link rolled away from the appendage that slithered into his tunic and then hacked at it frantically. Watch out! Navi's cry of alarm alerted him to the Dekubaba's mouth as it sprung towards him. Link scrambled out of the way, rolled to his feet, and then slammed his sword through the stem. Are you all right? Link asked as Sarya stared at plant remains in astonishment. I'm fine. She said breathlessly, Have you ever seen plants act like that? Link asked. Sarya shook her head. I haven't. Come on, you two! Navi called. She was almost in the glade now. Be nice if she asked if we were okay, Link muttered. And with that, he raced into the meadow after Navi. As always, when he entered the Great Deku Tree's sacred grove, Link's attention was captivated by the enormous face carved into the trunk of the forest guardian. The Great Deku Tree's eyes sculpted into the likeness of a wise and sage, gazed across his abode. Navi was already hovering frantically in front of the tree, like a small bird trying to figure out where to perch. I'm back, she called. I've brought Link with me. Oh, Navi, it is good you have returned. Link, Saria, welcome. I wish I had summoned you under better circumstances. The ancient spirit's voice boomed in Link's head as its mind reached out towards them. Usually, Sarya addressed the Great Deku Tree first and asked for his counsel, but it seemed the Great Deku Tree was content to dispense with that ancient tradition. This alone should have alerted Link to the fact that something was very wrong. Sorry we're late, Link called, forgetting himself. He came to a halt a few feet from the tree's roots. Mina was being a pain in the- Sarya's glare halted him in his tracks. Not only was he speaking out of line, but he was also not meant to talk to the Great Deku Tree unless invited to do so. I have brought you here because there is something I must tell you, said the ancient tree while paying no heed to Link's comment. Link was silent for a moment. The Great Deku Tree often told the Kokiri stories of history and the world beyond the woods, but a simple story did not explain the urgency with which Navi had almost dragged him from his bed. What is it? Link asked, taking a seat in the grass. At a scolding, looking from Navi and Sarya, he added, Great father. There is no need for ceremony, Link, the great Deku Tree said gently. And that goes for all of you. Both Navi and Sarya looked surprised, but they quickly hid it. As you have no doubt felt, the forest guardian continued, his voice grave. A shadow is growing across these lands. As the servants of evil gain strength, a vile climate pervades our realm, causing nightmares to those most sensitive to it. Sensitive, Link thought. I'm not sensitive. As I guessed, you have felt it too. The great Deku Tree continued. His ability to read Link's mind did not take the boy by surprise. There is little time to explain everything. The magic that runs through this grove and the Lost Woods has been tainted by a servant of evil, a man from the desert. The other Deku Trees I blessed with my power have also been affected. It was by my suggestion that they fell into a deep slumber. Their Kokiri moved here, or tried to find a grove unaffected by this taint. What? Link began, but the Great Deku Tree ignored his interruption. The source of this taint is a curse. A curse placed on me. Link gasped, 
And so did Sarya. I, I had no idea. I mean, words seemed to fail Sarya, her voice thick with shock. I, I knew about the forest, but how? Link looked at Navi, noting that she appeared neither shocked or surprised. She knew. Had he known, Link would have tried to be faster. Even Mita would have been more willing to let them pass, provided he believed her. You knew, didn't you? Link asked, sounding far angrier than he meant to. Navi nodded. Why didn't you tell me the Great Deku Tree was cursed? He demanded. Navi looked hurt at the outburst, and she opened her mouth just as the Great Deku Tree spoke again. Peace, my children. Navi did not tell you because I ordered her not to. I did not want you or Saria letting slip to the other Kokiri. I will answer what I can in due course, but until this curse is stopped, the forest is in danger. Link calmed himself, muttering an apology to Navi. It took a moment longer for him to grasp the full significance of the Great Deku Tree's words. He was cursed. The Great Deku Tree was the most powerful creature Link knew. His telepathy was far stronger than the rest of his kind. He could control the minds of the wild animals, though he only ever did this to creatures that permitted it. Some of the other Kokiri said he could even see through the eyes of the animals in the woods, making him privy to everything that happened within his domain. Then, that wall of plants around the meadow, that was your doing? Link asked. It was, the great Deku Tree affirmed. In my effort to stifle the spread of the curse that runs through me, I placed those plants around the glade. The creatures inside me fear to even dig near their roots. Apparently, Sarya understood, for she nodded her head slowly. Ling, on the other hand, was totally lost. You placed those Deku Babas on the path? Oh, no. They are a product of the curse and a sign that my defenses are weakening. Can we stop it? Link asked, feeling more and more alarmed. There had to be something he could do to help. We can make you better, can't we? Tell me what you need, and I'll get it. He'd been thinking of Saria's herbs that she used to cure various ailments. Then it occurred to him that these might not be much use to a tree. Hold fast to your determination, Link, for you will need it. There was a note of pride in the Forest Guardian's voice. You must break the curse within me. Use the wisdom Saria and I taught you, and the courage you have always had. I have to break a curse caused by something stronger than the Great Deku Tree. Link did not understand how he was supposed to do that, but he also knew the Great Deku Tree would not have asked him if the task was impossible. Will you do this, Link? The Great Deku Tree asked. Link felt anything but courageous at the idea of taking on something with the power to curse the Great Deku Tree. Slowly, he nodded. I will, Great Father. In response to Link's affirmation, the earth groaned, and there was a loud pop as the root in front of him moved. The soil beneath it collapsed, revealing the massive burrow-like hole it had been covering. Then enter, O oh brave Link, said the great Deku Tree. Link approached the tree. Closer, he could see markings drawn into the trunk. They were pictures of animals sacred to the Kokiri. There were seven in total, including the symbol of a wolf the symbol of courage, and the lord of the hunt. Link focused his attention on the gaping hole that lay before him. He examined the roots, noticing the deep wounds in the wood where something had been clawing and chewing at the tree. What could do that? His first guess was an insect parasite, but the great Deku tree had magic wards that prevented such an affliction from troubling him. Judging from the size of those markings, whatever had done this was much larger than an insect. He turned to face Saria as she too gazed down the hole. That was when the great Deku Tree added, Saria, I must ask you to remain here. I have a task for you. A faint rustling coming from nearby alerted Link to somebody entering the glade. He turned to see Mito peering around a rocky outcrop, his face completely white. Link knew he had been eavesdropping. How long had he been back there? Thanks for helping, Link wanted to say. He decided against it. Instead, he called out angrily, What are you doing here? I want to come. The great Deku tree is my father too, Mito called as he approached the tree's roots. I heard you yelling that he was cursed. Is it true, great father? 
Link didn't hear whatever passed between Mito and the Great Deku Tree. Whatever it was, Mito looked alarmed. Please, Great Deku Tree, I want to help too, the boy said out loud. Link was about to object when the Great Deku Tree's mind touched him again. He spoke to both Kokiri. Very well, Mito. You can aid Link. Mori, see that he does not come to harm or impede Link's progress. I won't, Mito said aloud. Mori made a noise like a protest, but consented to go. I must warn you, the great Deku Tree told them both. What awaits you inside is far deadlier than the plants you just fought. Oh, great. Don't worry, I'll handle it, Link piped up, trying to put on a courageous face. That flickering burst of bravery seemed to falter as Link stared down the hole. It looks like a burrow, he thought. No animal I know makes a hole that size. Mito did not wait for Link and darted for the opening of the tunnel. Hey, hey, wait! Let me see what's down there! Link called after him, running to catch up. Despite his dislike of Mito, Link wouldn't let him charge off into danger without help. If Mito were somehow injured, Link would have to look after him or send Navi to fetch someone. They left the light of the glade and descended into the tunnel. Link caught up to Mito as the tunnel sloped steeply downwards. He almost stumbled as darkness closed in around him. They had not gotten far when Mito stopped in his tracks and Link crashed straight into him. Mito! Link hissed. The boy didn't respond. He was frozen stiff, an expression of utter terror on his face. What? Link heard it. A faint hiss whispered through the darkness. And just on the edge of his hearing, he could hear a clicking sound. Something was scuttling towards them. As it got closer, Link saw its front legs, the long, shiny limbs of a spider, its legs thicker than tree trunks. Then he noticed the creature's head, its fangs like thick black spears. The creature hissed, and Link found himself looking into the eyes of a giant arachnid. The dorsal portion of its abdomen had a hard shell, shaped like a white human skull. The arachnid's mandibles clicked in eager anticipation of a juicy meal. Mito gave an ear-piercing scream and ran back up the tunnel as fast as he could.